All right, guys, we've got two of them in here. We got a BMW and we've got a Tesla. And this one here, I'm shooting a little different than I normally do. So I'm gonna show you how I went ahead and did this one here differently. That way we don't have to seal this one and uh, we can move right into our wet bed and right into the base. So let's uh, get into this one. All right, guys, so we've prepped out this BMW a little bit differently than we normally do. Cause you guys know I usually like to seal everything that I got, but we're shooting the front end of this car just for these little small stone chips and one little spot over here, there was a chip in the end of this door here. So I finished this one out with uh, 800 and 600 just in the spots. And I made sure it was really, really sanded nice and smooth. That way we can go ahead and just go ahead and wet bed this one and move right into our base coat. And when we do this one here, we're gonna take advantage of this curtain because I'll be sealing the, the Tesla over here. We got a new fender, a repair on the door, and then I gotta go up this post because it nicked it with the fender. So we're gonna go ahead and slide our curtain, seal our parts, and then we're gonna move into painting these two jobs, guys. So let's get into it. So this is where that curtain really comes in handy because now you can close it up and uh, go ahead and seal those parts and that vehicle next to it without blowing sealer all over that one that we do not want to seal. So we're going to go ahead and seal it. We've tacked it and then we'll do our wet bed on it. So this is why I really, really like having that curtain in there. When you want to separate something from overspray, you have the capabilities of this. So let's go ahead and seal the one job and then we'll move into our other jobs. All right, so the sealer's on the job and I'm gonna let that sealer tack up before I go ahead and close up that curtain just in case anything falls down off the curtain. So I wanna make sure that that stuff is dry and then I can go ahead and tack it if anything because that curtain wall does collect dirt and any of you guys know that have that booth or have the curtains, you guys know that they get overspray on them. So we'll let that one set up and then we'll go in and we'll tack off the BMW and uh, tack off the other part of the Tesla and then we'll move into the wet bed. So. Definitely a nice feature though for that overspray. You guys can see it separates that booth and allows you to eliminate overspray on the next vehicle. So let's go ahead, let it set up. We'll close it back up and then we'll move into the wet bed. All right, so it's all wet bedded now, and I wanted to let you guys know the reason I did that on that job. So when you have minimal damage on a panel or on a job, you guys know that that sealer 
usually is the dirtiest thing and blows the most overspray all over the place. So when you have small minimal damage, it's nice to just finish that job out really smooth. That way you can reuse your wet bed almost as a sealer and it'll eliminate a lot of dirt that you get from the uh, sealer. So this is a good sealer, but it definitely has a little bit of grain in it like most sealers do. And to me, it has a little more than the actual Sherwin-Williams does. So I wanted to make sure this job comes out as clean as it can because this is a brand new BMW with a hood job. And you guys know we don't like polishing, but if we have to, we will. But you guys know we definitely want to try to get them as clean as we can. That way we can get them in and out. So. We wet bedded it and we'll move into our base and then we'll see how it comes out cleared. And we'll look at both jobs, one that was sealed and one that wasn't, and we'll see if we could see a difference in it. So let's go ahead and move into it. All right, so that's one coat and we're using the LPH 400 with the 1.3 in it. And that's the 2021 clear with the uh, cocktail with the 95 reducer and the 98 reducer. And it's coming out really nice so far. We got both of them coming out nice and clean and we'll bring it in there. We'll see which one's cleaner. And you guys know we got a big hood there. So that would be a lot of dirt if it was gonna be, it'd be landing on that hood. So I like to, you know analyze each job and do it the best way possible and sometimes you have to change up your routine prep them out a little finer that way you can move right into your wet bed but i do recommend sealer on most of the you know jobs that i do because i'm always putting new parts and whenever you have a new part you always want to seal that part that way it has the best uh hold out and uh, so these are coming out nice. We're gonna give it a 10 minute flash and we're gonna go in and put one more coat on and then I'll show it to you guys to all finish up and let me know what you guys think.
All right, so that was the two uh, jobs all finished up and definitely came out nice. They were both pretty clean. And uh, the BMW to me was just a little bit cleaner than the uh, Tesla. So definitely didn't have really much of dirt in either one of them. But if I had to pick one, I'd definitely go with the BMW. So let me know what you guys think about the sealer. Do you guys think that you're getting a lot of dirt from your sealer, your base, or your clear? Leave it in the comments. And uh, I definitely do like to have that curtain in the middle of that booth for jobs like this. When you want to divide the booth up, it's almost like you have two booths. So let me know what you guys think. Give it a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one.